that rhythmic noise is actually from insects called cicadas and this is not a jungle this is a big coffee estate in Chikmagalur now if you did not tune into the overdrive show last week too bad because we're in the middle of a big SUV comparison well I'll not call it a test a comparison feature where we have over 25 SUVs last week we concentrated on the entry and the compact segment this week we have all the biggies the luxury and of course cars like that right at the back the G63 AMG take a look first in line for the luxury category is the new kid on the block the Volvo XC40 Volvos are known to make some of the safest cars out there and now they are also rolling out some extremely good looking SUVs the XC40 is the latest example. It isn't in your face aggressive, but a remarkable design helps it stand out from the crowd. Despite its compact size, it has the proportions of a typical boxy SUV, and that coupled with a large glass house gives you excellent visibility from all the seats. Each wiper blade has two water spray outlets with two jets on the edge and one in the center, which ensures a large and clean sweep. A lot of thought has also gone into the design of the cabin, including the storage spaces in the passenger cell and in the versatile 460-litre boot, which also packs a space saver spare wheel. Despite a meager 700km cruising range, the XC40 is an impressive long-distance tourer in terms of space, comfort and engine performance. The engine packs in more punch than the specs would suggest. And the all-wheel drive system with a dedicated low-speed off-road mode maximizes traction in difficult terrain. That said, this all-wheel drive is more safety biased over off-road fun and that reflects in the stage timings. Wonderful car, very nice, compact. Um, very refined, very European inside, plush inside, the seating is beautiful. Behave very, very well in this class. We're driving on little black uh, soil which is very, very slippery, but, but behave very well. If Jeep is the father of SUVs, then Land Rover is the mother. And the Discovery Sport is your entry point into the Land Rover way of life. Being an entry-level offering, it has compact dimensions, but unlike the Range Rovers, this one looks great only when it's pick and span. Ingress and egress at the front is favourable, but getting at the rear requires more effort. The wipers clean a considerable area of the windscreen, but what hampers peripheral vision during off-road drives are the stout A-pillars along with the speakers mounted on their insides. With a third row of seats up, the luggage carrying capacity is meagre, but with them folded down, the boot space is almost double of what other SUVs in this category offer. The full-size spare wheel, albeit a little difficult to access, indicates Land Rover's objective of their vehicles being suitable for all-terrain and long-distance voyages. Now, when you talk about SUVs and off-roading, I think Land Rover is one of the most respected badges in the world and the Discovery Sport certainly impressed us with its handling in mud, ruts, slush and everything that it was put through. And that's courtesy the fact that it gets an excellent terrain response system which tailors how the SUV behaves depending on the conditions you're driving in. But at 200 mm, I think the Land Rover deserves some more ground clearance. The engine is the least powerful in this category and feels sluggish at lower revs, needing you to keep it on the boil. This car has a responsive steering, is remarkably sure-footed and feels stable and solid at all times. This is the real SUV. Um, great fun to drive, uh, wonderful experience, you know, to come throw it in the co corner, it behaves so well. Uh, Triptronic gearbox is fantastic, engine was beautiful, fantastic engine, could get you out of any kind of uh, situation. It was very, very sl slippery, but, but didn't feel very sl slippery at all in this car. Seating is brilliant, you're right on top, and you're total car command of the car. And it's very compact, it doesn't feel uh, big at all, it doesn't feel large at all, it's very compact. BMW is known to put a capital S in their SUVs, but the X320D is a bit of a mixed bag. It scores full marks for a sporty design, but the sleek styling may not appeal to those looking for a typical boot stance from an SUV. 
Getting in and out is easy, although the rear wheel arch intrudes into the entry space. The thick A pillars have been wisely contoured to improve peripheral visibility, while the low dash enhances the view ahead. The overall space utilization in the cabin and the boot is excellent, and the H3 also comes with a space saver spare wheel. The X3 has an impressive cruising range of 1100 kilometers, but the engine is evidently sluggish with a full house. The X3 doesn't make any false claims of being an off-roader, and to that effect, it doesn't even get an off-road mode. But the rear bias X-Drive all-wheel drive makes sure that the rear steps out often in the slush, and that makes it very involving and fun to drive. Pleasantly su surprised, the car, car was very, very ca capable. I never expected it to be so, so capable. It behaved very well in the slush. Gearbox was fantastic. Enjoyed the, uh, the Triptronic uh, uh, paddle shift. Never went sideways, this side or that side. And, and the power also was very good, very, very good. The engine was good, as usual, European high standard. Seating is very good, position is very good. Very refined, very comfortable SUV. The XC60 is another dapper-looking SUV from Volvo with a refined sense of strength and style that gives it an authoritative street presence. The low roof line needs you to bend slightly to get in and out. But despite the high dash, visibility is excellent from the orthopedically approved front seats. The XC60's wipers are even better than the 40s, with each blade literally having a mini washer sprinkler system in it. The sprinkler works in tandem with the movement and the speed of the blades, ensuring one of the cleanest swipes in the business. The cabin is well laid out, but the boot space could have been better. The spare wheel and the tools are easy to access. The XC60 is an excellent mile muncher with a 875km driving range and a relaxed yet potent engine. The SUV has a stupendous ground clearance of 216mm or 223 millimeters with the suspension raised. The XC60 is the only mid-size luxury SUV in the country that lets you increase the height of the suspension to increase the ground clearance. And that's definitely an advantage when it comes to driving this SUV off-road as you can clear ruts and potholes a lot better with a lot more confidence. The underbelly does not scrape at all. We've had a fantastic experience in that sense, but I do wish the tires offered some more grip on slush and in ruts because these are road-focused tires. That reflects in the stage timings too, with the XC60 finishing 17th. It once again highlights the fact that Volvo prefers to set up its SUVs for stability and safety and not outright speed. It didn't seem very planted in the slush. It, it, kept, it kept drifting all over the place. Braking was good, but uh, the conditions were very, very sli slippery and, and it was twitching all over the place. But maybe if the tyres were better, it would have helped, uh, helped a lot more. It was, it was drifting all, all over the place in the slush. The Audi Q5 is one of the most well-dressed SUVs out there, looking stylish and sophisticated despite its evolutionary design. The ingress and egress is simple, but you often rub against the dashboard while getting in. The sizable A pillars obstruct cornering vision. The wiper cleaning area is excellent and the washer has six powerful jets dispensing an immense amount of cleaning fluid. The cabin is airy and smartly laid out and the boot is spacious. The diesel engine is very peppy and free revving and virtually has a petrol-like response. Its low and mid-range power delivery is potent and the Audi Q5 handles precisely and is very stable at speeds, making it a good touring machine too. Quattro. That's the magical word when driving Audi's SUVs off-road. It is the system that helps you stay on the road, ensures there's optimum grip at all four corners, and I can literally feel all four tyres digging into the slush and helping me make forward progress. I think it's a brilliant car. I could, I could feel a perfect uh, SUV. I could feel uh, all four all four wheels just biting inside the earth and, and just dragging the car. It was absolutely fa fantastic. Yes. It's safe to say that the Audi Q5 is as agile as an antelope and quickly responds to driver inputs with eagerness. All mechanicals work in complete cohesion and one can carry speed even into tight turns. These capabilities reflect positively in its stage timings.
So let's ramp up the Lux Quotient and begin with one of the most popular luxury SUVs out there, the Mercedes-Benz GLE. Now most people don't buy a Mercedes-Benz to take it off the road. Still, that's what we did with the GLE and it was quite a revelation. The Mercedes-Benz GLE is a large and imposing looking SUV and of course it has massive road presence. But it's also the 3.2 star on the grille that gets you a lot of attention apart from those dimensions. But with that said, I think I have to say that the current generation GLE is beginning to look slightly dated despite the family look that it wears. The ingress and egress is good. The A pillars disturb view around turns but frontal visibility is nice. Wiper sweep area is fairly satisfactory and the washers have six jet sprays. The full-size pair does eat into the boot space but is easy to access. The GLE comes equipped with Fomatic, which essentially is a proper four-wheel drive system. And of course, being a luxury SUV, the GLE also comes equipped with adaptive suspension which lets you increase the ride height which means ground clearance is excellent. Well, goes without saying, it is a luxury SUV which means that you also get a host of driver aids including a terrain selector that lets you choose and customize the powertrain depending on the kind of terrain that you are driving on. The GLE also has the most comprehensive off-road display screen and we simply love it. But strangely, for a SUV with such advanced off-road features, it has no headlight washers. However, the rear view camera is concealed in a cavity and only pops out when the reverse gear is engaged. Almost all the other SUVs had their cameras getting dirty in the slush, but this innovative feature prevented it from happening in the GLE. The GLE is also a brilliant mile muncher and the massive 93-litre tank gives it a touring range of over 1,050 kilometres. Its bulky size and weight gives it good stability on the highway, but that also took a toll on its stage timings. It may not be the fastest, but feels planted and safe at all times and in all driving conditions. The Audi Q7 is one of the most aspired for SUVs in India and a symbol of having arrived. It is a great example of modern day SUV design. It is significantly sleeker than its predecessor and that means it is not daunting enough for some. It is easy to enter and exit and the front quarter glass increases cornering vision. It has a very good wiper sweep too. With third row seats up, the boot space is limited. The Q7 has a powerful engine and a range of over 750 kilometers. It has great high speed stability and long legs for extended road trips. More importantly, it has the famed Quattro all-wheel drive system and the best-in-class ground clearance of an exceptional 235 millimeters. Complementing the mild off-road intent of this car are underbody protection, effective headlight washers, a useful 360-degree camera and an adjustable ride height thanks to the air suspension. A large car on the road, lovely SUV. Uh, conditions were very slippery to today, but, but nevertheless it uh, held on. Uh, braking was very good, lovely engine, lots of torque in the engine. Conditions were very sli slippery, so, so I didn't want to uh, accelerate a little bit more because the rear end was, was, was stepping out. In fact, braking and handling was very good, very, very responsive. Even though sharp corners, it, uh, it came in very nicely without uh, letting the rear step out. The Hollywood movies that I've grown up watching have often had these enormously large SUVs and that is what the Lexus LX is all about. It still retains that old school, butch, burly character to it. And then it mates it to all 21st century radical bits that you see on the face and on the tail. Well, it looks so imposing which is what people love about SUVs the most, right? And that is the main draw of this car. It stands. And then you step inside. There's so much space in there. Check it out. You literally climb into this car. Feels like a truck. But then you step inside and you know it's a luxury car. The kind of luxury elements you have in here. Beautiful. The interior is palatial and inviting and has 10 AC vents. The maximum amongst all the SUVs featured here. Despite the chunky A-pillars, visibility is excellent and you can see the full expanse of the bonnet. Wipers have a good coverage but the washers are old-fashioned, the jet spray type. Now this switchgear may feel cluttered at first but if you do take this beast off-road, not everyone will, but if you do take it, you will appreciate these switches being right here and you not having to navigate through a lot of menus to get to the functions you need, especially with this idiotic joystick. 
Now these switches, you have everything. You have something to toggle your ride height. You have a toggle for moving into the low range gearbox. You can change your driving modes. You can change the terrain or select the terrain modes that you're going to be driving on. You have hill descent control, crawl control, and then you also have this turn assist. Now that's a very important one. I need to in fact show you that. Can't just talk about it here. Let's go out. By breaking the inner wheels, the turn assist helps in making tighter turns when there is limited space to maneuver. A variable fluid control technology that controls the flow of the steering fluid as per speed, engine RPM and steering angle, reduces steering effort while also enhancing steering precision and feel. The LX comes with 4-wheel drive with low ratio gears in the transfer case and also comes with various driving modes for various terrains. There's also a 5-speed crawl control for inching forward on treacherous and tough terrain. Yeah, it's a great car. It's a, it's a fairly large, large SUV. Uh, it's, it's loaded with features. Um, lovely car to drive, but, but, but I guess not, not in such a narrow uh, uh, terrain. We put, put it on for four-wheel drive high, and it was very responsive. It handled, handled, handled uh, brilliantly, even over the rough. Um, rough surfaces, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't feel a thing in this car. It was uh, excellent, brilliant car. Unsurprisingly, it is the slowest on the stage timings, given its bulk. But don't let the size and the luxury fool you. This one is a capable mother of all SUVs. Speaking of which, next up is the Galando wagon. God, I just love this car, the G63 AMG. I know there's a new one out there. This is still the old one. But what difference does it make? They're always going to stick to that iconic shape, right? And that is the whole charm of this design. That iconic old school shape with all new age ornamentation. Just looks gorgeous. It has that imposing stance. You just cannot ignore this car. No wonder it's the highest selling model for AMG. The doors are tall, they're wide, so ingress and egress is not a problem at all. But the beauty of this particular cabin is not the carbon fiber trim. It's not the old school styling, but a part of it. The visibility. This slim A pillar makes sure that the visibility is excellent. Be it forward visibility, all round visibility, cornering visibility, not a problem at all. You also get a nice view of the bonnet. You really get those nice views of those little turn blinkers. So, getting a judgment of the car, especially in off road situations, no matter what the tilt angles, it's really, really easy. But what I like the most is this the sound of the AMG V8. Oh, and this also is the most powerful car of this comparison. Though it isn't as spacious as the other luxury SUVs, it is born for off-roading and it shows. Even the headlights have such powerful washers to get rid of the gluey muck. It has a very good ground clearance despite the AMG version being lower. The overhangs are almost non-existent and there's a foolproof four-wheel drivetrain with three sequentially locking differentials. It does not get more serious or capable than this. Which essentially means that the off-roading aids are all mechanical, no electronics in here. Which also means the skill is finally down to the driver. Well, you've often heard us say that some of these German cars are built like a tank. Well, it begins right here with the G63. It's built like a tank with the engine from a rocket ship. It isn't meant for long-distance touring really. And that engine is a guzzler. Another reason why I wish the regular G-Wagon diesel comes to India is because the AMG gets quite a handful in the slush with its white tyres and a surge of power being fed to them. That said, it has confident handling and is fun to drive, but not suitable for setting stage times. And now it's time for the hardcore ones, SUVs that were born for the wilderness. But after a lot of debate, we decided to keep it a level playing field. So no extreme articulation courses or rock crawls for these off-road junkies. We begin with the Jeep Wrangler. It is the SUV that gave Jeep its stature and definition. In fact, it traces its DNA to the World War II model Willys MB, also known as, well, you guessed it, Jeep. That makes the Wrangler the direct descendant of the first SUV ever. It maintains the shape of the original and has modern day adaptations. And this harmonious fusion gives it the character and the street presence that we adore. You have to climb into the relatively compact cabin and the upright windscreen offers a good view that is only partially obstructed by the A-pillars. 
बोल्ड स्टाइल वाइपर्स क्लीन अ फेयर एरिया इट इज अ स्टेबल एंड केपेबल हाईवे क्रूजर एंड शाइन इवन ब्राइटर ऑफ द रोड इट हैज स्ट्रॉन्ग स्किट प्लेट फॉर द ट्रांसफर केस एंड द फ्यूल टैंक There's a four-wheel drive with a low ratio, a heavy-duty axles, and the right suspension to give it the go-anywhere capability. It isn't meant for fast lap times in the slush, but its competent drive train and excellent all-round visibility make it a lovely SUV for the wild outdoors. Loads of fun, excellent uh, vehicle for plantations, for the tea industry, rubber industry, coffee industry. Very stable. I was using for four-wheel drive, and it was very, very sta stable car. Mahindra once had an association with Jeep and this piece of history reflects in the tar. The design is therefore quite familiar and has carried on for decades. Climbing in needs some effort but due to the almost 90 degree angle of the windscreen and the wafer thin A pillars the visibility is excellent. Wipers are basic and the sweep is also limited. Despite the recent update one is left wanting for better build quality and easier ergonomics. A full size spare wheel is fitted on the tailgate for easy access. The Thar's drivetrain feels unrefined and the engine feels underpowered and sluggish. High speed stability is not up to the mark either and needs corrections even to keep it in a straight line. Highway cruising then isn't its forte, but its four wheel drivetrain, a low range gearbox and a lockable rear differential give it impressive off road manners. Ideal for people uh, living in the mountains in the uh, running plantations. It's made to be driven in such uh, conditions. So it was good, good fun uh, uh, driving this in the slush. We we're using four-wheel drive uh, high. Four-wheel drive was good. Guys were very good. It had big, big tires, so the, the Jeep was stable. No frills, old-fashioned, hardcore. Those are the keywords that come to mind when you look at this Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon-inspired off-roader. It's a traditional two-box layout with flat panels that have the folds for rigidity. It looks purpose-built, has a fully functional snorkel and protective bar around the windscreen. There's a roof carrier, headlight and taillight guards, a jerry can at the rear complete with a Gurkha Kukri knife logo and a shovel and an axe that are also mounted on the carrier. It does look a bit primitive and cheap, but the Gurkha towers over everything else with mighty street presence. It comes in hard and soft top versions too. There's a good space at the front and back, but the seats are really basic. Don't expect any comforts or luxuries here. It stands high and you have to use floorboards to climb in. The upright windscreen, large windows and the thin A pillars ensure that the view is exceptional and uninterrupted. In fact, it is one of the best examples of a commanding driving position. It will go the distance, but it doesn't necessarily mean it will be comfortable or is suitable for long distance journeys. The engine is also underpowered for overtaking at high speeds and is noisy and unrefined. It has four-wheel drive with low ratio and differential locks on both front and rear axles, all mechanically engaged via levers. No electronics or driver aids in here. The approach and the departure angles are remarkable due to the almost non-existent overhangs. However, the ground clearance is not as much as expected because of the low suspension underpinnings. But everything that you see on the Gurkha is built to take a hammering. Felt and looked rock solid, uh -huh. um, behaved well on the road. Ideal um, farmer's car, ideal for maybe a cab or what. Well, that's it from Chikmagalur. It's been a week of slugging it out. We have had a lot of fun doing all of it. I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. And I hope you also realize that even if we are 20, overdrive is still a lot of fun. That was our anniversary special. The anniversary issue is out on stands now. Do check it out. Do grab a copy and stay tuned to Overdrive every week. Thank you for watching.